Our next guests are part of the cast and creators of the new Disney Plus show American Born Chinese, adapted from a graphic novel of the same name. The story follows teenager Jin Wong as he navigates the daily challenges of American high school and his home life as a child of Chinese immigrants. When he meets a new student on the first day of school, even more worlds collide as Jin unwittingly becomes entangled in the battle of Chinese mythological gods, naturally. Please welcome showrunner Kelvin Yu, executive producer Jean Luen Yang, and actors Ben Wong, Shin Han, Sidney Taylor, Melvin Marr, and Daniel Wu to the South by Southwest studio. Give it up for the American yeah. Born Chinese crew. Yeah. Woo! All right, we're having a moment. And I think it's time for Asians to flex. <laughs> yeah. we are, this show is coming, I, we've earned it, all right? This show is premiering on the heels of a small little movie. Yeah. That ha, tiny little movie mm. that has Three cast members, yes. uh, Michelle Yeoh, yeah. uh, Ki Hui Kwan, yeah. and, and no, st four, Stephanie Chu mm -hmm. and James Hong as part of, the, as part of your team. Then on Sunday night, swept the Academy Awards, everything, everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. Just uh, how does it make you feel? <laughs> Anyone, just throw it out there. <laughs> I mean, the, just the feeling of seeing that. It's a little, I was in shock first, but it, it you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday that like, <clears throat> It, I just had a complete emotional moment of it, just mm -hmm. watching Key and Michelle up there, like Key Kwan especially, like that guy was done with acting, and he came back and you know um, won a championship. It's like, yeah. there's no other way to describe it, right? Thirty years later. <laughs> Thirty years later. And you know, uh, growing up in the '80s, yeah. being you know, we saw Key. I saw him in Goonies. Yep. Yeah. I saw him in Indiana Jones. Short round. I'm like, this guy's so good, and he had to disappear. He openly said, Wait, oh, I'm sorry, he's in Goonies? <laughs> You're like, and wait for it, Encino Man, the American classic. Yes, 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 finally. Yeah, yeah. But he had to leave, and he's been open about this. That's he right. had to yeah. leave because despite that talent, yeah. despite working with Spielberg and Richard Donner, yeah. mm -hmm. they're like, we have no roles for you. Right. Yeah. And he's in your show, and the meta aspect of this show, which is great, without giving too many spoilers, is he plays the type of token, humiliating, Asian characters that we grew up with in the 80s. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the impact that that has on the characters, right? And so I got to go to Gene from the Bay Area, from Fremont. We're here now, man. Oh, man. We're <laughs> here. Right. We're here. here. Fremont? 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 Well, Oakland. Yeah. Bro. Oakland. Bro. Oh, Oakland. there you go. I mean, All right, so you, the Bay Area has really taken over Austin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but for, we're here now. We're here now. Yeah. South by. Yeah. That's right. Uh, growing up, when you saw that, and now you see this, uh, this is a safe space to cry, by the way. How does it feel that the graphic novelist who used to get picked on as a kid, who wrote this book, this great book, is now being celebrated and giving a lot of money by Disney Plus <laughs> to bring this vision out? It's, it's been really surreal. I, I just don't think um, we could have predicted any of this, right? Mm. Uh, it's, it's been very, very surreal. Uh, and in a lot of ways, I think he sort of typifies the kind of journey that our entire community is on. I think that's why we're also attached to him, is because he all represents, yeah, he represents what we've always dreamed of, you know, and we've, what we've always thought possible. And, and what we thought possible was, I mean, speaking for myself, even though I'm South Asian, at the end of the day, you're growing up watching and inhaling pop culture, mm -hmm. you see white. So anytime you see anyone, that's who right. looks like us and our friends were like, we gravitate. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, short yeah. round was Ooh, us. Who's that? <laughs> who's that? Your short round was us. Right. Uh, and and he, Data was us. Yeah. And we were always the sidekicks, the punchlines, the villains, or we were completely removed from the story. Mm -hmm. And to see the focus, American-born Chinese, Chinese leads, Asian showrunner in the background, it, it's something really powerful. And, and, and the graphic novel came out in 2006. Mm -hmm. I've been a fanboy of Gene for a while because uh, I'm a grown man who still reads comic books. <laughs> and it got a lot of awards, acclaim. Fast forward, if my math is correct, I'm an English major. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, so it took 17 years yeah. for that story to come to the screen. Why now, Kelvin? Uh, I think a couple of things. We needed to be the kinds of people who could get something made. Mm. And that didn't happen right away. And then, um, Secondly, the audiences needed to be interested. <laughs> so I don't, you know, when in 2006 there wasn't an you, you audience. You think the audiences weren't interested? Well, who knows? But the studios weren't interested in that's, making that. That's so maybe so they're, I get they're you there. there. Yeah. I want to get you there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so what you're waiting for is for all of that to converge into one moment in time. And it, it, we're standing on the shoulders of things like Fresh Off the Boat, things mm -hmm. like Crazy Rich Asian, things like Shang-Chi. Um, and we're, we're trying to move the needle ourselves and be 
uh, then hopefully the next step in mm -hmm. not just putting different faces on the screen, but telling deeper stories, um, getting you know more nuanced and more specific about our experience. Um, and to be honest, we developed this in 2018 to start. We had a very different script. Um, there was no such thing as Disney Plus. So the, everything's moving so fast. Um, and then to boot, Sunday night happens. Mm -hmm. And kapow, kapow. Now kapow, you're like, kapow, what? Kapow. Yeah, now what? we're, like, uh, <laughs> we're <laughs> mainstream. We're drafting off. And, and, of them. and you yeah, know, there's sure. the, in the industry, Gene and I have talked, he's given me advice before about writing. Uh, oftentimes, what we get is your ethnic stories will not be mainstream. Mm. Prove to us that your ethnic stories translate to mainstream, which is translation for, hey, black and brown and Asian. Mm. Prove to me that white people will like your story. It's sure. so humiliating and exhausting. And now you got that. You're like, well, <clears throat> everything, everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. American born Chinese. And in Shin Han, I'm going to get to the elders and the youth. Uh, <laughs> this is, I got to do the, the Asian hierarchy. That just, I was raised right. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Shin Han, you, uh, in this show, what I really enjoyed with the, the themes play on three different levels. Mm. Uh, Ben's character is trying to fit in, right? You're like uh, second generation. But then you represent our parents' generation. Right. And I said to you earlier, no pressure, man. Don't mess this up. <laughs> uh, and, and it's these men and women who came here who did everything right, who are superheroes. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to find their voice. And I think every character is trying to find their voice and their identity. But the pressure that you had to represent that generation trying to find their dignity and their voice, even though they did everything right but aren't seen as American. How would you bring that into this role? Well, I mean, personal experiences, obviously, uh, are a big factor for, for every actor. So, I mean, seeing your own parents uh, working and trying to forge a path in a foreign land, you know, compared to what's happening with the script was, was a very easy kind of association to make. The challenge of this particular character and this particular generation mm. uh, of the, our, our parents' par generation, our parents' generation, is how much do you assimilate uh, uh, to to facilitate this, and how much you actually hold on to your identity so that you don't lose yourself in all of it. I think that what do you give up? The, yeah, that that was the that was the challenge because you have to do both. I mean, if you're going to be the reality of, you know, living in an environment where you're not the majority, I think you have to do both. I mean, you, you have to find some way to assimilate and you have to find some way to still be yourself, you know. So I think that the the journey that the parents take uh, Simon Wang and his wife uh, played by the the wonderful She was great. Yo Yan Yan, uh, really parallels uh, what uh, Ben's journey is, and and you know you you do learn from uh, the new generation as well because they they take risks that sometimes the older generation can't afford to. So I think uh, it's it's a very moving and it's a very touching kind of relationship between between the the parents and it's, the son. You know, it is moving because I saw the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. It's about trying to maintain quiet dignity. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. assert yourself in a situation where asserting yourself might come at a cost mm -hmm. of losing everything. Yeah. And, and then it's really great to see that, in, in, without giving too much away, your wife in the, in the show is the one pushing you instead mm -hmm. of being the submissive Asian woman. She's like, come on, man, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And it's about the, the, the push and pull of giving up and holding on. Uh, the, the father, we got two dads, the monkey mm -hmm. king, <laughs> Dan, you're also a father in this. Right. And it's interesting, the yin and the yang of this is that you have to actually let go. Yes. And, and that's the tension without giving too much away. And so how'd you bring that, that aspect of fatherhood to this role? I'm actually going through that right now with my own kid, right? I have a nine-year-old daughter right now who is... Bro, I got an eight-year-old. Right, yeah. right? You know what it's like, right? And so you're trying to form them in, in some semblance of you, but then they're also themselves, and they're also trying to be themselves, right? And they're going to make the mistakes, similar mistakes that you make growing up, and you've got to just let them do it. The tendencies you want to stop them from doing that but sometimes you gotta let them go. And, Out of and love let, though. Yeah, and Protection. let that be a learning moment for them, right? And I think that's what the Monkey King is going through in this, in this story, because his sons run amok, but what he's doing is similar to what he did as a child, and so he can't really say much about it, but he's also mm -hmm. concerned as a parent, you know, about that situation. So it's very, although I'm playing a very fantastical character, that situation is very, like, real world and, and relatable. I think without giving too much away, there's three, there's three layers, right? There's the fantastical aspect of it that you <laughs> represent, there's the, second, uh, gener the first generation and the second generation, but intersecting in parallel with the themes of assimilation, identity, let go, 
what to retain, and now I'm with the youth. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Men, you play, yeah. you're the protagonist, Hello. if you will, one of the protagonists, and you represent our stories. Um, and in the, in the beginning, I, I love that first scene. It, was, it reminded me of my mom taking me to Mervyn's. Rest in peace, Mervyn's. <laughs> Let's pour one out for Mervyn's. Yep. Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, I know you don't. Just, <laughs> just be grateful you don't know what Mervyn's okay, is. Okay, yeah. uh, but you're just a kid. Yeah. You just want the cool kids yeah. to like you. You want the pretty girl to like you. But you want the white cool kids to like you mm. because you're the other. And you're trying to find the jacket. Like, if I just wear this jacket, then they'll like me. Yeah. And, but everyone else is telling you, I think you just need to be yourself. And you have to navigate all these terrains and these themes, no pressure. Uh, how'd you bring that? Because there's a lot of weight yeah. uh, on you, yeah. on representation, and you're a young kid, man. <laughs> so how, how'd you navigate that with this role? Uh, well, that, you know, part of it, there actually was, uh, you said no pressure, there was immense pressure. Um, and then, and, and part of it was just like, Kelvin's right behind you, by the way. this. We right, talked about that. Right Don't tape. tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, there are other actors who can play the role. Yeah. You remind me every day. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was very much like, I, I had the, the pressure, and I was like, well, that's exactly what Jin would feel. You know, and it's exactly how I remember feeling. Mm. Um, so, like, all of this, like, people are always like, well, what was it like, like, working with Michelle Yeoh and all of these greats? I was like, it was immensely stressful. And it was like, that's exactly <laughs> how Jin would feel in the presence of, you know, right. mythological gods. Um, um, so, in a way, it was very kind of easy for me to just sort of let it go. Mm. Just, just use basically what I had coming into this project and, and, and have that sort of inform whatever it was. So you are a method actor, what you're, what you're <laughs> By accident, by accident. But yeah. it does, it, the, 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 the <laughs> discomfort, it's interesting because it was like us growing up. Right. I want to flex, yeah. but I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. I want my voice, when do I keep quiet? I want to blend in, but the cost and sacrifices I make of blending in eat away at my soul. Mm -hmm. and, and how that's mirrored is really good. It's just subtle stuff that I really appreciated. And the object, if I could say, of your desire uh, is Sydney. Uh, and Sydney's character, um, you know, come in the first two episodes, it's interesting tightrope because we don't know. Does she look at him as a joke? Does she like him? Is she kind? Is, is, is there tension? How do you approach his character when you were doing these episodes? As, as an other or as a colleague who I want to know better, but something's getting lost in translation? I think from the start, she was very very much like wanted to be friends, was very interested um, from their first interaction, which was one of my favorites to shoot. <laughs> um, I fell for you, bro. I won't say more, but I fell for your character. I'm like, it's oh. that moment, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, Here's a moment. so oh. cute, but oh. oh. Um, I think she is intrigued by him and, and, you know, fights with her own stuff of like, she wants to be cool too and liked by all these people and she sees sort of all of the cool people being kind of sucky to him and she kind of doesn't know where to go with that I think because she's 15 and insecure herself and wants to be liked but you know I think in the end she she really remembers who she is and and finds a good relationship with Jin, whatever that relationship may be if if you know it's no friendship spoilers. or something more or not like it it it, yeah. it i think it mends really well and sort of becomes this thing of when you really are 15 you don't know how to do that and you're figuring it out yourself and you don't know what it is or like if you really like them or if you want to be friends or if that awkwardness it's, is like... That. It's beautifully awkward, <laughs> and I think me and Ben's relationship that we had beforehand of, like, we just got along really well from the start and, and hung out, like, every single day. And so you actually like each other in real life, which is... Somewhat. Like, yeah. yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Tolerate each other. Enough. Enough. You know, Melvin, I think... For those who've been in the game a long time, uh, you know. Thanks for uh, making me sound old. No, sure. yes. <laughs> I see the gray hairs. I see the gray. We're old heads here. It's fine. Uh, this is a safe space for the, the old heads. What was the golden era of Hollywood like? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What was it? Uh, was, what was it like when talkies started? Yeah. The talkies. Uh, but you know, I was looking at the social media as one does, and the response to Asian Americans pure joy. Mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday, right? Yeah. As you said, and I, I shared it, I was unexpectedly moved. Yeah. And I tweeted that. I was like, why am I so moved by this? Yeah. It's just, it's just yeah. the Academy Awards. Who cares? But I was like, I'm really like, this is yeah. impacting me. Yeah. And, you know, folks observing our response to that, they're like, wow, 
why are you so moved? Yeah. I mean, if you can explain to the audience how powerful it is to be here. I, you know, I think Michelle this put it really well, right? When she, the first thing she said was, it's for the little boys and little girls that look like me. And as you get older, like I have, you sort of, you know, you stop thinking about that directly. But when she says something like that, and she is the visual representation of it, like she won a championship. <laughs> like, you, you, it hits you at a place, you know, way back when you were like Ben here, like what he's portraying in the show. And it, it hits you and you just can't put it into words. Like I, we were on a text chain where I just said, I, I don't know what to say except for just cry and I'm so happy for you guys, mm -hmm. you know? Like that, that was the only way to describe it. Mm. It's also gratifying. I think, you know, Key has this narrative where he's um, disappeared for 30 years. Like you said, came back and yeah. won a ring. Yeah. Uh, Michelle is the picture of glamour and Hollywood sort of excellence right now, but people forget that she came into the industry or her industry in the 80s and it was very like roll up your sleeves and figure this out. Like they were doing stunts on like mattresses and off the back of a pickup truck. Like she, she was, she, she started at a time where they were just figuring it out. And so there's something really kind of rough yeah. and tumble and we've gotten the chance to work with her and she could not be more like just game to figure this out and just get the best shot. And yeah. it's an incredible thing to see somebody like that. I'm, I'm old enough to remember that, you know, America discovered Jackie Chan yeah. uh, in the <laughs> early 90s. Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. like 94 yeah. and then yeah. Michelle Yeoh, they discovered her and then she became the Bond girl. Right. Then and then was. I interviewed her 15 years ago. I interviewed Brendan Fraser and Michelle Yeoh back wow. to back oh, when wow. we were premiering Mummy 3. And she was just so, I always tell everyone, they were so down to earth. Yeah. She was so glamorous and yeah. so just lovely. Yeah. And, and to see this now, but you know, Gene, yeah, you came out with this, this you know, the themes that we're talking about. Uh, oftentimes, if you, if you talk about it and if you say nonfiction, people are like, ah, after school special. But <laughs> you, in my opinion, Trojan horsed it in American Born Chinese. Because you have the nonfiction part of it, but you have this fantastical element of Chinese culture and heritage mm -hmm. infused. The choice to bridge those worlds and make it almost like symbiotic, mm -hmm. that was an intentional choice. Take us through that. Well, you know, it, I started American Born Chinese when I'd been doing comics for about five years. I'd always had these Asian American protagonists, but their Asian Americanness was never central to the story. So I knew I wanted to do some kind of book where it was central. And I came up with these three different ideas. <coughs> Couldn't decide which one I liked the best. So in the beginning, it was kind of like an intellectual exercise. It was almost like a puzzle to try to fit them together. But as I was working on it, I realized that um, living between worlds is sort of, that describes who we are as immigrants' kids, right? We feel like we live in one world at home and another world at school. So that's what became American Born Chinese. What I found though is, um, you know, since the book's come out, I've gone to these different <laughs> school communities to talk about the themes of the book. And it, it really does feel like um, that that feeling of being caught in between two worlds is nearly universal. Like so many kids have come up to me after my talks and told me, oh, that, that resonated with me. And their parents are often from other places. They're not necessarily from China or from Taiwan. They're from like, Poland or they're from Nigeria, you know, the Philippines. So that feeling of being caught in, in between two worlds is, is universal. I, I also think that's why uh, the Amelia character is so important because she looks like she should fit in. But as the series progresses, you realize the same kind of tensions between Jin and his parents are reflected in the relationship between Amelia and her parents. It's, it's the parallels that you see in the show. That's which right. is really, if, you, That's if you're paying attention, it shows up in every yeah. relationship. It points to the universality. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, with, I, I like to talk to you guys for 20 minutes. We'd probably just start crying at the end. <laughs> but uh, with the 90 seconds I have left, I have to give props to the elders, the ones who've gone through it, uh, the humiliating auditions, uh, and had to really just grind their way. So Shinhan and Daniel, huh. you know, at this moment, I'll start with you, Daniel, because of the bay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've gone through it and you've proven it. Not, you're not just an actor, you kick ass as a martial artist. Uh, you have been described as strikingly handsome. Uh, <laughs> you, had, you have and had throughout your career all of the elements to be superstar. And oftentimes you were relegated. Mm -hmm. Do you feel now like vindication or do you feel like Mm, still got to go. Well, I've had an interesting experience because I started my career in Asia, in Hong Kong, right, where race wasn't an issue at all. So I was allowed to be myself, to be a, an actor without thinking about this whole level of race on top of that. And it wasn't until I came back in 2014 and started working here that I had to realize, oh, there's a whole nother filter. 
But what I'm seeing now and what happened Sunday night is like you realize the doors open and things are unfolding now and we are now allowed to be ourselves instead of trying to hide or assimilate into like being this ubiquitous American generalized thing. You know, we can be our unique individual cultural selves, but also be American. And that's like the great thing to be in this moment about. And we have actually ran out of time, but I'm going to take 10 extra seconds as the elder. Shin Han, give us wisdom. <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, I, think, I think it's uh, wonderful to see, um, to see, you know, actors, but I mean, we, we can't forget all the other people involved in the creative process because mm. this is so collaborative, right? Film, television, people like uh, showrunners, producers, writers, uh, directors in our in our midst, because we can't tell a story by ourselves, you know, I mean, I think that uh, everyone comes together to allow, especially us actors, to be fully, to be full expressions mm. of, of these characters and human beings. And that's where the difference is between tokenism and actually being mm. able to play authentic and rich and full characters. From the Bay to South Bay, we're here. We're here. Yeah. here. We're here. American born Chinese. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Premieres on Disney Plus May 24th. And it's premiering today at South by at 3 p.m. at the Paramount Theater. Make sure to check it out. And you can see our complete schedule of our upcoming studio interviews on our website, sxsw.com slash studio. And these interviews are live streaming, just like now, during the event on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash sxsw. I'm your host, Wajat Lee, and thanks for watching.